What's going on guys? It's the Bulls and the Bears here with a midweek update video. If you are new, welcome in. I trade the wheel strategy, which is an option selling strategy. And in my videos, I show you the trades I take, the profits I make, and how you can do it too. Today, the account's at 26,300. It's currently 1218 in the afternoon. So the market's live. My positions window consists of the usual suspects. Right now is Bank of America, Pfizer, and CVS. These are all positions that I own shares of. 200 shares of Bank of America, 100 of Pfizer, 100 of CVS. I have no other cash occurred puts sold, no other small positions going and whatnot. I did do some trades though this week. I had a Disney position that I closed this week. I even did a credit spread, okay? I did go back into a credit spread once or twice. I keep saying that I'm not trying to do that, but sometimes there are just opportunities you gotta take in this market as opposed to sitting on my hands and waiting for my wheel stuff to marinate you know what i mean so we'll talk about all that the account is looking a little bit better though we have recovered several hundred dollars the market is up we're over four thousand in the s p and we're going to talk about that right now so here's the daily chart of the s p 500 and do you see what i see we are hitting a resistance point this trend line from this previous high of about 4200 it's been pretty legit. I mean, we hit it um, in February 14th. So obviously it starts here. We hit it here. We hit it here on uh, March 22nd. And now we're back at it. We already kind of re rejected off it earlier in the day when we had our high sold off quite a bit. We pretty much, that pretty much counts as hitting it. You know, it's not perfect. A perfect thin line is probably a small little zone. I consider that a rejection. Now we're heading back to it. Will we break out of it? Will it hold again? I'm not sure. But that is a significant point to consider. This is unexpected to me. This is uh, one hell of a rally of a recovery from the prior Fed meeting. I mean, this was the big Fed day where uh, we had a really nasty sell off. Well, we're pretty much we're above those levels. We're above that the opening price of that day. You know, we, we still have that upper wick to take out, but we're still above all of this nasty price action from that day and forward when we sold off and we kind of were struggling around that point, low 3,900s. Well, now we're up over 4,000 and we're still rallying, which is nuts. I was talking about a potential head and shoulders pattern in my last video. From the October lows, go up here, come down, here's the head, comes down, here's the other shoulder, and then we go down. Now, here's the thing. Where is this right shoulder gonna stop? I said the right shoulder could have topped out right here and that this is technically the peak of the shoulder and now we're going to go down i also said it's possible for us to go a bit higher to hit the same peak as the left shoulder which would put us around 4100 so i think we could very reasonably push up higher than this take out the previous high go up to 4100 and still have the bearish head and shoulders pattern intact that's just my my bearish take the bullish take would be we break out of this trend line that i have we break out here and then we just kind of continue this this uptrend this this larger uptrend you know technically this low right here did not take out this low it, it almost met it but not quite so technically that is a higher low therefore this could still be a an uptrend a new bearish, uh, a new bull, a new bullish trend from the low back in October. That's very possible. It doesn't seem like it would be, given the macro environment, the high rates, the hawkish tone from the Fed, the bank crisis. Could it be worse? Writings on the wall, possibly, maybe, maybe. But the markets don't care. I am more and more convinced after every single day of watching this stuff every day watching cnbc every day it's part of my job as an investment analyst i'm constantly involved in the markets i hear the macro and i'm more and more convinced after every day that the market is just a game it's detached from reality the more and more computers that run the market and algorithms and large institutions it's all trading based it's all people trying to make a buck it's not very reflective of the actual environment fear and greed that's what sells, that's what makes money, and it just goes up and down based on that. So even if things look bad in the environment, in the economy, 
It doesn't mean the market, the S&P and whatnot, is going to act accordingly. It might act accordingly in the long term, six months, 12 months. But in any given day, any given week, we could be very rational, go up 2%, go down 2%, whatever it is. Because at the end of the day, it's just big institutions moving money to make money. They're not doing it to, to better their investments in the long term. They're doing it to make money in the short term. And, at that, and if that's what's controlling the market, which I feel like it is more and more every day, especially with the zero DTE options and all that, then the intraday, intraweek moves are going to be, you know, nonsense, nonsensical. But if you're watching this, you're a trader. I'm a trader. So I don't really care that much. I'm always weary of the macro environment, so I am bearish overall. I am weary of downside. I am a bit fearful, but I'm here to make money. And if the market's going to move up, I'm happy with that because the wheel strategy is a long side strategy. Your short, your short puts or your long shares. And when the market moves up, you benefit in both of those situations. So I'm loving this right now, but I am conscious of a possible downturn. So... We, all we can do is just play one day, one week at a time. And that's what we're looking at right here. A nice upside move with SPY. And if we do break out of this trend line, like I said, it could be that, that bullish case of this is just uh, an, another leg for an uptrend that we're starting. And we're going to take out the prior high of 4200. Is that possible? We'll see. But enough of that. Let's get into the wheel and how we're looking. Here is the wheel graphic. We are up $639 on the month. This is the last week of March, so we only have a few days left. Um, not too much is going to happen, I don't think. Um, there's one possible thing that could happen, and that's Pfizer, because I have a covered call sold on that, and if that gets assigned, that position gets closed, and I realize a good chunk of profit. So I guess there is the chance for this profit to go even higher. But aside from Pfizer, I don't see myself making any additional moves, at least not for this week. I did do some things this week though, so we're going to go over that right now and we're going to start with Disney because last week I did have Disney shares. I bought 20 of them on this dip right here on Friday. This dip. And I did this as part of my new, even more conservative approach to the wheel strategy. I was fearful with the banking shenanigans and all that and the Fed raising rates. I was fearful of a pretty sharp downturn. I thought maybe we'd get some serious selling soon. Therefore, I wanted to take it slow and buy 20 share lots here and there as the stock drops, as opposed to selling one put at one level and collecting all 100 shares at that one level. If you do it right, ultimately you can end up with a better average price all said and done by doing small lots, 20 share lots five times, as opposed to selling one put at one level. Because for me, when I sell my put, I need a certain amount of premium. I look for 30% annualized return on the, on the premium, on the trade. So that means I can only go so far down with my cash secured put to the point where if I just average in with 20 share lots at a time, it, my average would end up being better than my cash secured put. I could go way out of the money and sell a put at like 86 and collect $2.00 then yeah, my average would be much better down here, but that's not the kind of cash secured put I'm trying to sell. So given my rules, the conservative approach of buying 20 shares at a time as a stock drops would yield a better cost basis. So I tried that on Disney because I liked where Disney is. It's in my buy zone. Here's a 15 minute chart. And uh, I took a stab, 20 shares at, at 93.17 right down here, which ended up being a nice bottom. So that was perfect. Uh, Friday, we rallied, we rallied a little bit more that day. And then on Monday, we gapped up and pushed up. And that's when I closed it. So I had 20 shares and I didn't get any more than that. This push got me up $2 per share or $40 in profits. And I took it. I took it. I took the $2 per share move with 20 shares. The $40 profit I made essentially acts as cash secured put premium. You know, when I sell cash secured puts and close them early, I'm typically making around 30 to $50. So if I can make that profit with the shares, then it essentially acts as if I sold the cash secured put and closed it early. So $40 on the shares, all good to go. I could have held it. I don't have a set rule with the share uh, strategy. I don't have a set rule. My initial rule is if I can get a profit similar to that of a cash secured put, 
then I'll just take it and it's essentially the same thing. But I could try to just hold out and see how high I can go. Because worst case scenario, you know, if I didn't if I didn't sell right here, worst case scenario is it rolls over and then it goes lower and sure I miss my chance to sell and take some profits, but it's still going according to plan where I'll, I'll where I'll buy more shares down here and so forth. So there's really not a huge risk. There's a slight opportunity risk to where I could have had some profits locked up. But at the end of the day, Disney moving lower is according to plan. And I'll just grab, grab another 20 shares and then another 20 shares after that. So it depends. I'm not sure how I'm going to go about it ultimately. But I did decide to take the profits because me personally, I hate, I cannot stand when I have profits and they go away. And I let them go away. That's what happened with CVS. And I'm still beating my head against a wall over it. I had $40 in profit on Disney. I took it. Because if it did roll over and, and ultimately go back down to where I originally bought the 20 shares, I'd be kicking myself. I'd be saying, wow, I could have sold them for a profit up here. And then I could have gotten them right back down here and be in the same exact position, but $40 better. That's how I look at things. I hate losing money. I'd rather give up additional profits for the sake of realizing the profits that I do have. So although Disney is another dollar higher per share, uh, I'm still happy with that decision to sell it. Moving on to SPY, I did do a couple small, small day trades with SPY. It ended up amounting to um, one small winner, one small loser. I lost $9 total. Um, not really going to go over it that much. I just took some, some quick stabs on uh, on same day contracts. It only cost me like $60 to $70, so not a huge risk. I bought the 395 put on Monday when we had this massive gap up right here on Monday. And then we started to roll over, broke the, the opening range to the downside. I figured, yeah, at this point, we're going to fill this gap. So I probably bought a put around here, around 396 My target to be 395 ish though the gap fill. I got it. I made a small profit. On Tuesday, yesterday, I'm going to go to the five minute on this one. I was a bit bearish. We gapped down. We sold off. We popped back up a little bit more. And I was expecting us to, to roll back over. And I started to get it right here. But it didn't follow through. Our target was low of day, a low of day break. It didn't happen. We popped up, ended up pushing up a little bit. So I closed it for like a $20 loss. All said and done, I lost $9 between the two. Not a big deal. Uh, but because my positions are are pretty tied up, like CVS is way at, way underwater, nothing I could do. Bank of America, same thing. Pfizer, it's looking good. I have a covered call, but there's nothing else I can do. I'm not looking to sell cash geared puts right now, and there's no name that's offering me the opportunity to buy shares at a good spot. So I'm pretty much doing nothing. So that's where I'm getting these small inclinations to try to take a little stab at a day trade here or sell a credit spread there. That's what I did today. I sold a credit spread on SPX at the 4030 level. If you go to the daily chart, you'll see why we're at this big resistance point, this trend line, I figured it would hold. Um, so I sold a call credit spread above that level at the 4030 mark right about here. And that trend line kind of held. We sold off. We went sideways. Ultimately, the spread decayed quite a bit. I closed it for 50% profit and made $50 there. So I am scalping some profits here and there with a day trade or two with the credit spread here and there. And that is boosting the month a little bit by as much as $100. And there's a lot more risk introduced when I do these smaller day trades and credit spreads. So ultimately, trying to stay away from them as best as I can. But when an opportunity presents itself to make some money in the market and it looks really good, A plus setup, I'll take it. So now I'm going to talk about my other wheel positions. We'll just glance at CVS quick. Not much to say here, still way underwater. Here's my break even up here at 82.66. But I will say we are higher than the low, which is nice. We're not making new lows at the moment. We bottomed out near $72. We're up at 73.72, so maybe we bottomed. I don't know. I was hoping that this was the bottom a couple weeks ago, and we still broke that. So I'm not going to get my hopes up, but I would like CVS to kind of at least chill out here and start to move higher. If I zoom out to the weekly chart, come on. You can see why it might actually stop around here, because we have this consolidation area around the 70s from back in the 
April 21, so two years ago. So I'm not surprised I decided to stop here. I just hope that it actually starts to move up from here. It's oversold on the weekly chart and the daily chart is just now getting out of oversold. Just barely is that RSI of 3067. So we just got into the normal range. We're no longer oversold in the daily, but any type of red day will probably put us right back into it. So we're, we're pretty extended is the point. So I'm hoping we can start finally start to push up. Pfizer is a nice one because this is one that I'm doing very well in. I'm taking really good advantage of it. My break even is down here at 39.16. So I need to adjust my graphic because it says 39.29 on my graphic, but really it's 39.16 because I sold a covered call on it on Monday. So there's the line here, I just added it. So I sold one at the 41 strike. I collected 25 cents for it. And I did that on Monday when we opened pretty high. So let me go to the hourly chart for this. We opened on Monday way up here. So a really nice gap up. We pushed up as high as 4061. Again, I got assigned at 40. If you can see this gray line, I have it here as my assignment price at 40. My cost basis was down to 3920 29. 39.29 was my cost basis at the time. So I was in a pretty good spot. The 41 strike was paying good premium, luckily. So I was able to get a nice strike way up there at 41. Got good premium for it, 25 cents. And then we collapsed all the way down to $40. We dropped 60 cents, which is a lot for Pfizer. And my covered call decayed quite a bit. It decayed over 50%. And my rule, it's a soft rule. Don't always, always stick to it. But in this case, I did. If my contract expires by 50% or more in one day, the same day that I opened it, then I will take it. And that's what happened here. I sold the call and the same thing applies for calls. Usually it happens for puts, but I'm going to apply the same thing for calls as well. I sold a call first thing on Monday. It Pfizer dropped. The call decayed quite a bit and I closed it for a profit. So it went from 25 cents down to 12 cents and I was able to profit 13 cents. So that adjusted my cost basis by 13 cents. So it went from 39.29 to 39.16. But now, but at that point, I didn't have a covered call anymore. So the idea was to wait, close the call, take that profit and ideally have the stock rebound so you can get another opportunity to sell the same call for the same premium. It did rebound. It got as low as 40, and then we pushed up here to 40, 40, 40, 50 or so. Now, it didn't get as high as it was when I opened the first call. So the 41 strike was not paying enough even after that return back to the mean. However, I decided to go ahead and sell the 40, 50 call. It's a lower strike, so I am shorting myself a bit. My upside is worse than it was with the 41 call, $50 worse, but... I got good premium for it. I sold it for 30 cents and I don't mind being tight with it because ultimately, like I've been saying, I'm personally bearish and fearful. So if what I feel is going to happen actually happens and we kind of decline, then it's going to benefit me to go for that premium of the lower strike of 4050. And if I do get assigned at 4050, sure, it's not as good as 41, but it's still going to be a really nice profit of like $160 or so. So I'm happy either way. So I sold the 4050, I got 30 cents for it, and that's where I currently stand. Pfizer's at 4010, it's Wednesday, we still have two days left. It only needs to be 40 cents higher than this for me to get assigned. I will gladly take assignment here, free up some buying power, and clear up my positions. If not, then my cost base is, is gonna be reduced by another 30 cents. And my break even is gonna go from 39.16 to 38.84. It's going to be below 39. So that's going to be amazing, an amazing cost basis if that happens. So I'm still in a pretty good spot. If Pfizer just kind of diddles around, goes sideways, then I'm just going to continue to sell calls and collect that premium and lower my break even. This is a pretty good wheel strip wheel uh, opportunity here for me. It's And you obviously want upside. You want the stock to rally. You want to get assigned, sell the shares for a good profit. But 
going sideways isn't that bad either because along the way, I'm just going to keep selling calls, collect that premium, and lower my break even. So if it wants to do this for three months, that's okay because, because I'll always be able to sell a nice call and my break even will just keep going down and down and down and make the position that much safer. So happy there. Bank of America is the last one. Having a good day today. Got to give us some credit. I have 200 shares. My break even is 29.66. We're at 28.66. So now we're only one dollar away from my break even. We were as far down as 26.33. Now we're two dollars and thirty cents higher than that. It looks like we're starting to recover. The the positive day in the market helps too. I've always liked Bank of America. I think this move that it had was just in sympathy and not a true reflection of the actual company itself, Bank of America. So I thought it was a good buying opportunity. I did get in a little early because it dropped a lot more than uh, what I expected. But I still think ultimately we can snap back above 30, maybe even above 32. So I still think a, a break even around 30 or 29.66 is great for the long term. So happy there. Glad to see it having a positive day. Hopefully it continues. All right, guys, that's the video. Glad to see a lot of green on the screen, particularly with the watch list. The account is coming up a little bit now. Still have some ways to go. Bank of America and CVS are in the red, very costly. But all we can do now is just kind of wait and see. CVS pays a dividend soon in a couple of weeks. That'll be about $60 if I'm still holding it. So that's cool. That'll reduce my cost basis some more. Bank of America will have earnings coming up soon, I think mid-April or so. So that's going to be a catalyst I'll probably be around for. I mean, I don't, I might be able to get my Bank of America shares over with before then, but I'm guessing probably not. And then Pfizer's working very well, so no complaints there. We still have two days left in the week. I will not be here to make a weekly recap video. I'm going away Friday and I'm not coming back till Monday. So that's the whole weekend and I'm not going to have time to make a video. So I'm probably just going to skip it. I might do a community post to just go over quickly what happened profit-wise. And then I'll be back with a midweek update video next week. So that's it, guys. Thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed, hit the like button, subscribe for more content, and I'll see you all next time.